Penny and Guy from Midwinter Minis here for a very special spooky Halloween episode. We're going to show you how to bring the fearsome rabbit of Kerbanog from Monty <laughs> Python and the Holy Grail from the silver screen to the tabletop. And we've even made some fun rules so you can use it in Warhammer 40k too. All you've ever wanted and more, am I right? <laughs> Projects like this are great fun and the perfect way to break out of a painting slump and inject a bit of joy back into your hobby. If Monty Python, or just generally having fun, isn't your thing, you can just ignore the rabbit bits of this video and think of it like a rocky cave basing tutorial, which is incredibly boring. Now to create the rabbit of Kerbanog, the first thing you'll want to do is obviously source a tiny, tiny bunny rabbit model. Surprisingly, these are quite hard to come across, but I managed to find some model railway rabbits on eBay. They're O scale, which is roughly 1 to 48, which again is roughly heroic scale. They're a little bit on the chunky side, but the other option is OO scale, or 1 to 76, which is way too small for the effect we're going for. There are a few other scale model rabbits out there, but I've linked to the ones that I bought from Serious Play in the description if you want to get the exact same ones. As you can see, they're teeny tiny little things, but unfortunately only two of the five I ordered didn't have broken ears or feet. Once I chose my favourite pose, it was time to decide on a base. Now, generally you want to choose a base that's appropriate to the model, but in this case we thought it would be pretty funny to give the rabbit a fearsome hero-sized 60mm base to give him that foreboding presence on the tabletop that such a beast deserves. Now to make the base more interesting, I'll be adding a few skeleton bits from the Warlord Games Skeleton Warrior Sprue, some broken up bits of cork placemat, some aquarium gravel, and my trusty pot of sand from Portobello Beach in Edinburgh, still going strong since 2014. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that's where it was from. Yeah. Break up your cork sheets so that you don't have any nice refined edges. You only want to add the flat surfaces on the top and the bottom. And once you've got a couple of bits, dry fit them without any glue and try to keep the rabbit in the centre of the base on a nice foreboding outcrop. Once you know where you're putting stuff, use superglue to glue the cork sections to the base and to each other. It'll dry fast so you can keep on working without waiting too long. We thought it might be easier to leave the rabbit off and paint it separately, but because it's so small we couldn't be bothered getting all fiddly so we just stuck it on straight away. Use super glue again to glue down a few bits of aquarium gravel here and there, and before the glue totally dries, sprinkle on some sand over those areas too. It'll help tie in those big rocky bits to the rest of the base. And once you're happy with the amount of rocks and debris, crack out some structure paste or texture paint. I'm using Citadel's Armageddon Dust for this, and slop it onto any boring flat areas of the base. Make sure to stipple and move the paint around so there aren't any obvious brush strokes left behind. Make sure to wipe off any bits that spilled out onto the edge. I like to keep my rims nice and clean. I bet you do, eh? <laughs> now straight away, whip out some crackling texture paint. I'm using Citadel's Agrella and Earth for this, and slap that down nice and thick on areas you'd like to look like dried, parched earth. This is pretty much just your sandstone necrons thing, isn't it? Yeah, I only know one trick, leave me alone. To add to the texture and break up the regularity, sprinkle some sand over the wet paint so it dries in. Trim and clean up your skeleton bits, apply a bit of PVA glue to the underside of them and place them sparsely around the base. It looks pretty gross right now, but once it dries and gets painted up it should look pretty awesome. Okay, you want to watch some paint dry? Star wipe! Pretty cool, huh? Once the base was totally dried and cured, I gave it an undercoat with Citadel Zandri Dust spray paint. Now this crackling texture paint tends to be a bit flaky and prone to breaking off over time, so I like to add my own DIY dip wash whenever I use it. It has a good dose of PVA mixed in, so I think it helps make it much more robust. Before we start applying that though, I'll break up that flat colour a little bit by painting on random spots of grey onto the sticky out rocky parts. I'm using Citadel's Mechanica Standard Grey, but you can use whatever grey you like really. After I was happy with that grey, I mixed two Vallejo paints together, Intermediate Green and Saddle Brown, and painted that new earth tone into the less arid looking areas of the base. So once all of those paints are dry, it's time to apply that DIY dip wash. It's pretty easy to make, you can mix up however much or as little as you want, and it's super cheap once you've got the basic ingredients. 
check that link that just popped up if you want to find out how to make it for yourself. But don't do it right now because you need to finish this video first. Apply that wash all over the model. A regular brown wash like Agrax Earthshade would do if you don't want to make Guy's version. And leave it to dry for a few hours. And once it's dry, it's time to bring out some of that lovely texture with some easy dry brushing. Now get a big soft brush and work in a little bit of off-white ivory paint into the bristles. I'm using Citadels of Shabti Bone for this tutorial, and do your best to remove as much paint as you can on some paper towel. Once the brush is practically dry, sweep it across the whole model to catch all those cracks, bones and rocky textures. Added a tiny bit of white paint to that ivory and gave only the bones a very gentle dry brush. Now we wanted to be authentic and we wanted to match the colour of the ground to the very scene in the film, so we applied a little bit of the old Citadel wash Thoraka Green here and there. Guy mixed in a half drop of red paint into some Agrax Earthshade to make a slightly warmer earth tone wash and painted that on a few areas as well. Then we double checked the colour against the film. Not bad for someone who is colourblind. <laughs> right. To paint the rabbits, I carried on using that off-white mix I made to paint the bones and thinned it with water, and gave the rabbit its very first thin coat. When that was dry, I gave it another, and then another, just to make sure the base colour was nice and solid. Whites and off-whites are notoriously weird to paint without looking chalky, so you have to keep it thin, way thinner than you'd think. And while I had this colour out, I also gave the bones a final, very, very light dry brush just to bring out some of the sharpest, most prominent details. While we wait for the beast to dry, let's add a couple of little tufts to bring the scene to life a bit. These are from Green Stuff World, but they're a bit too flowery for the setting. No problem, a little snip with some scissors and a yank with the tweezers got rid of about half of the flowers. A little blob of super glue on the base where you want to place them, and then carefully squidge them down. Press them down here and there using a cocktail stick and give the strands a little fluff up to make them look a little bit more perky and less trampled. Trim so they're not all the same length and to get rid of those pretty flowers. And there, that's the foliage out the way. Okay, back to the rabbit. I added some white to that ivory white mix, now almost working with pure white right now, but still very thin. I painted this on the big, bulky, top-facing parts of the rabbit, as well as the tip of its tail, its brow, nose, and floppy little ears. We'll add a little subtle shading in a moment, but before that, grab your smallest detail brush, rehearse your deep breathing, get in the zone, um. and mix some red and brown paint together. Thin it nicely, and very carefully dot the rabbit's eyes. Once you're happy with those, draw a little line up under its nose, and then split that line into a V-shape. Congratulations, you just painted a tiny rabbit's face. That makes it sound a lot less killy <laughs> than it is in real life. In real life? In the film, that which is basically real life. Thin down some brown wash with water, about one to one, and use your detail brush to gently and carefully line only the deepest creases of the rabbit's body, under its neck, in the folds of its legs, and a little under its tail. Use your white paint again to fix any mistakes, or just to tidy up the face if you did a little smudge where you shouldn't have, and you're done with the terrible beastie. Right, time to finish off the model by painting the rim of the base a nice complementary colour. I'm going for Vallejo Saddle Brown, as it nicely ties in all those earth tones together. Thin it nicely and apply at least two thin coats. I'm always stunned by how many amazingly painted models I see out there that obviously have days and days of work poured into them, but then have a super sloppy thick coat of black around the rim. Just take your time and get a nice, silky smooth finish. Two thin coats. That's right. Make Duncan proud. Where's the moment where I do all of my Monty Python quotes? It's soon. Oh. And there we go. The Rabbit of Kerbanag. <laughs> all right, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we mentioned that we came up with some Warhammer 40k rules for it? Well, let's take a look. Before that, huge thanks to Zingbo for formatting these rules so beautifully for us, and welcome to our newest patrons, Jean, Ivan, and Sean Starstriker. So here we go. Lots of in-jokes for Monty Python fans to enjoy here. The rabbit of Kerbanag is the most foul, cruel, and bad-tempered rodent you've ever set eyes on. 
This is a single model equipped with huge sharp. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unaligned beast, a fast attack unit costing two power or 32 points, depending on how you prefer to play. True to the film, its 10 inches of movement make it a very rapid and mobile threat. Nearly always hitting its mark, it has a weapon skill of 2 plus. No guns, so no ballistic skill. And it can overpower several men at once. Five, I think. Was so, three? Or is it three? <laughs> <laughs> so it has a strength of four. It is just a rabbit, though, so it has a toughness of one. Basically, anything will wound it on a roll of a two. Now, just one wound, but massive five attacks make it a vulnerable but intimidating threat on the battlefield should you get too close. Are you sure it was five, guy, or, or was it three? <laughs> it's pretty fearless with a leadership of ten, but doesn't have any armor to speak of, meaning it saves on an impossible natural roll of a seven. It's huge, sharp! Melee ability hits at strength 4 and easily shears through plate and mail armour, giving it an armour penetration value of minus 3. Each successful wound causes 2 damage to the unlucky victim too. Now, onto special abilities. He can leap a boat! <laughs> <laughs> so good! Models in this unit have a 2 plus invulnerable save and can move across models and terrain as if they were not there. A 2 plus invulnerable save sounds pretty nasty, right? Well, how about this other super fluffy rule? Who being naughty in my sight shall snuff it? <laughs> the model's invulnerable save is ignored if it is attacked by a weapon with the grenade type and a strength characteristic of 3. No more, no less. <laughs> Not two, unless it is to be modified to three. <laughs> Five is right out. <laughs> it also has a vicious streak a mile wide. <laughs> After the fight phase is concluded, roll a d6. On a four plus, the rabbit of Karbanog may pile in up to three inches toward the closest enemy unit and fight once more. What it lacks in toughness, it makes up for in fighting ability. Finally, it has the rule. Look at the bones! <laughs> <laughs> and the units within 12 inches of the Rabbit of Karbanag subtract two from their leadership characteristic. Now, obviously, this is pretty overpowered in lots of ways, but one lucky hit from pretty much any weapon in the game will kill it if you roll right, so not too much to worry about. Seriously, though, this is a scary rat. Did you see the film? <laughs> It's quite a fun project to bring models and characters from other games and films and anything really into your regular hobby, and I'm sure it would also work really well in Age of Sigma or any of the other fantasy games. If you've got any suggested character profiles, data sheets, or special rules to port it into other games, we'd love to hear what you make in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this Halloween special. Bye for now. Bye! Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Join our Patreons! Subscribe! Like the video! <laughs> or the dog will cry! <laughs> she cries all the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs>